In this video, I'll be installing the Molosi MHR 77 to 86cc big bore exhaust onto my scooter that has a horizontal Minarelli engine, or actually a Chinese clone of a horizontal Minarelli engine. I'll go over the installation process in detail in case it helps anyone else that's installing an exhaust, but before I go on, I do want to say thank you to ScooterTuning.ca for hooking me up with a discount on this exhaust to help me along with the project, so make sure you check those guys out, and now let's get started. Now I've removed the piece pipe, but the flange is a little bit dirty. Um, so anytime you're going to install a new exhaust, you'll want to make sure you clean the flange. And usually I will start out with some sort of cleaner and just a rag or paper towel. Um, in this case, I'm going to try brake parts cleaner and see if it'll come off with just that. That got it pretty clean for me in this case. Sometimes it doesn't, and what I'll do is then I'll use a fine Scotch-Brite pad, again with some sort of solvent like a brake parts cleaner, and just lightly go over it and see if it'll remove it that way. And sometimes the gaskets will also leave the actual gasket behind. In that case, before you do any of this, you'll want to use a scraper, preferably a soft scraper, and get the gasket, like chunks of gasket material off before you begin any of this. Before trying to mount this exhaust to the scooter, there are a few hardware issues that I want to take care of. The first one is that they do provide a pretty decent hardware kit here, but what is missing is any way to fasten the uh, exhaust flange here to the engine. So, in my case, I'm going to use two M6 by 1.0 by 15 millimeter long uh, bolts here, cap screws. Um, and it looks like, according to their diagram, they're saying that you can use original studs um, if you've got those and hex nuts. Sometimes with these exhausts that have large headers you actually can't use a hex nut but it looks like these would uh, clear. So it's up to you but I'm going to use again these cap screws. So make sure you source those before you get going. Make sure you've got some way to fasten that to your engine. Um, and it's important to check the length of these because you can bottom out and you don't want to over tighten and strip something out uh, bottoming out very long bolts into your cylinder. The next issue is this exhaust gasket. So if you watched the last video, you probably saw that I had to elongate the holes in the flange here so that they would match up with the exhaust flange on my TPR86CC cylinder. And it looks like I'm going to have to do the same thing for the included exhaust gasket because they don't extend out wide enough uh, to match up to the header now. There are quite a few ways that you could do this. I'm just going to use a rotary tool with a carbide burr in there. Um, but most people will probably use some sort of razor knife or sometimes you can even use a hole punch um, and just kind of punch these out a little closer to the edge. And just make sure that that matches up with your flange. I've also noticed some rough casting and very sharp edges on some pieces of this bracket from Melosi. And I want to take care of those. I'm not so much concerned with anything cosmetic, um, but for one, any of those sharp edges could cut you when you're trying to work around the exhaust. It's just more stuff that can hurt you on the scooter that we don't need. There's enough problems already with that. Um, and also, anything really sharp can be a stress point so just gonna take care of those real quick I'm just gonna use an angle grinder because it's very quick but you could also file it or uh, use a rotary tool all kinds of ways you could deal with this I went over a couple of edges very briefly with sandpaper after that just to make sure it was really smooth and now I don't have any sharp edges to catch my fingers on or anything else and who knows, maybe if this turns out to be a good exhaust, that'll help it last a little longer without trouble. I'm going to do this installation a little bit differently than it's laid out in the instructions, because the first thing that they tell you to do is to mount this bracket with the relevant spacers. Um, from looking at everything, I'm going to guess 
If I need spacers, it will be these, but I don't really know if I need those spacers or not. Um, and it could be that I need different spacing because this is for Azuma or probably Aerox and things like that, and I'm using Chinese clone cases. Uh, so instead, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to begin by mounting my exhaust flange here um, and installing the gasket. Now that this is cleaned up, I'll need to figure out which orientation this should mount in, and that's actually pretty simple. Um, you can see I could mount it this way, and I could mount it this way, and basically one way puts this spring hook here around the front, and the other would put the spring hook in the back. Easy way to do this, look at your exhaust pipe, and I can see that the hooks on here are around the front of the exhaust pipe, so I would want this, uh, the flange, to match that. Just start one bolt at a time um, and make sure you're gentle with them. Don't cross thread anything because you don't want to ruin your cylinder. Also, I am not installing this with any kind of sealant on the gasket, although sometimes I do use copper RTV. Um, in this case, I'm just going to try it with nothing on there, just as supplied. I'm just going to use this T-handle to tighten them. Um, the proper way would be to find torque specs for your engine or your cylinder kit and go by those. Looks like I'll have another minor delay for a small modification. If you look at my flange coming off of here and then this cover I've got for the stator area, you can see that those two are really close to each other. Um, it's never been an issue with my old pipe, but that's a little too close for comfort, especially because the new uh, exhaust is going to slip over this, so it's going to be even larger. So I'm just going to take this cover off and remove that corner, grind that corner down a little bit, and then I should be fine. That's much better. Now I want to mount my bracket, but I've got multiple bolts here that are M8 by 1.25 in different lengths and different styles. They don't tell you exactly what to use, so normally I would use a bolt about that long to mount brackets to my uh, engine here, my engine cases. Um, so I see that I've got two roughly the same length, pretty similar. Um, this one would work well in the top, and if you look at the bottom, it's set up for a countersink screw here, and I've got two options there. One is way shorter than what I normally use, so I'm going to go with that one. One thing you can do to help you pick out what works best is to look at where else you'll need bolts. Like, for instance, I'll need something to go through here, and I can see that something like the bolt that I just chose for my exhaust is way too short for that. So it should be one of the two longer options, so that works out well. Um, this bolt may actually work well for the stinger, uh, the support for that, but if need be, I can always source another bolt. The holes align pretty well, so I'm going to go ahead and mount this up loosely. Um, I've got a pretty good amount of space here between the tire and the bracket, so I don't think I should have any reason to use a spacer based on that. But still, I'm only going to install my bolts fairly loose, um, because I just want to see how everything fits together before I tighten everything down. And you may notice I've also added a washer here. I'm not sure that they supply any washers for this, so I just grabbed an 8mm washer that I had around. So that's not real tight, but it's not moving around a whole lot either. Next I'm going to get ready to mount the exhaust. And I also want to make sure I've got the bolt that will go through this bracket and the bracket on the exhaust handy, as well as the washers and the lock nut for that. So at the same time, you kind of need to get this started over your flange here, and then this little bracket needs to go around this bracket. So sort of slide that up and then pivot this on and start working the uh, header over that flange. And if you can, to make it easier on yourself so you don't have to hold this, you can go ahead and just slide a bolt through there for now. 
then continue to work this pipe up over the flange. And there I can feel I'm bottoming out on the flange so I can't get it any further. Now what I want to do is see if I have any clearance issues with the pipe. As you can see I don't have this clamped together or anything. These are just snug but it should be hanging roughly where it's going to hang. So I want to look all around the pipe and see if I have any problems with the pipe touching anything. And one of the common points that's an issue will be tire clearance. And you can see hopefully up here I actually have a decent bit of tire clearance. It's not a whole lot, but uh, it's more than a quarter of an inch. One thing that's very important when you're working with an exhaust is to make sure you don't have any sort of tension on the pipe uh, caused by the way that you're mounting it. So it's nice if all of your holes line up, the mounting holes, everything, your brackets line up well, and the exhaust can sit in sort of its natural position where it's designed to sit. What you don't want to do is to have to kind of muscle the bolts in and torque things down to get the pipe where you want it and so on and then you put a lot of pressure or tension on the exhaust because what happens then is over time or sometimes very quickly uh, that puts a lot of stress on the pipe and that will lead to the pipe cracking so it's really important to make sure this is set up correctly right now um, and for me this bracket here is sitting right in the center of the brackets on the exhaust itself all the bolt holes are lining up nicely and I don't have anything putting tension on the pipe since everything appears to be as it should at this point you could either just tighten these two bolts up or what I'm going to do is actually remove them one at a time and I'm going to put some medium strength thread locker on there and then reinstall them and tighten them down Now I'm going to put this on the right way. So I'll go ahead and remove this bolt that I had just sitting through there. And again, speaking of that tension, you can see it just naturally wants to sit pretty well lined up with the hole in that bushing. So I'm going to put a washer over one end, slide that through, and then I will put a washer over the other end and use this nylock nut. And now you should see that these two sides, this bracket on the pipe, will close down around the bushing in this bracket um, as I tighten it. Next up we need to take two of the supplied springs and we'll use them to attach between here and the two spots on the pipe. So two of them will go on this ring and then they need to be pulled down onto the pipe. There are numerous methods to accomplish this, but for me the easiest one is to use one of these spring puller tools. You can get these all over the place. I would suggest maybe considering buying one that has a name brand that you recognize uh, because I have had a cheap one just snap off when I was using it before. What I'm going to do is just put that little hook through one of the spring ends and then I'll use this tool to pull it down and hook it into this spot here. Okay. At this point we're only left with mounting the silencer and securing it to finish the installation. So I'm going to begin by just sliding the silencer on over the stinger here. And you're going to want the outlet kind of aimed out and down. It's a bit tight, so it may take a little bit of working it to kind of get it over there. And I can see it's removing some of the clear coat. Alright, that looks pretty good to me. Now we've got one more of these springs to install. You should see that we've got two holes back here on the silencer. Uh, this hole obviously aligns better with the hook on the pipe, so I'm going to use that one. I'll go ahead and hook that spring through there. Once again, I'm going to use my spring puller tool and pull that back to hook into this loop there.
The last part of the mounting involves using this clamp to go around the silencer and secure the silencer to the exhaust. So they've given you a protective coating on there and all you've got to do is peel that off. Then this can just be spread open and placed around the stinger or the silencer. Now this bracket needs to be secured so that it is pinched with a bolt through it and it will have this spacer behind it and the bolt will go through this hole in the uh, exhaust. Looking through the bolts that I had left over, this one was the closest but with a little bit of test fitting um, it seems to be a bit short so I had an M8 by 1.25 bolt here that's just a little bit longer and I think it'll work better for me and it could very well be that I've just used the wrong bolts um, in the wrong spots at times although everything else seems to be working well for my installation uh, they also don't have any other nuts included with a kit so I've got an M8 by 1.25 nut to go along with that um, unfortunately didn't have a nylock nut around but this will work fine for now I'll use some thread locker on there and also it looks like these two washers probably should have been used to secure the exhaust to the bracket that attaches to the engine um, didn't realize that at the time, although I believe it's fine with what's on there. And these just don't fit uh, in the space here. They're a little large, but I had standard M8 washers around, so I'm going to use those. And you'll have to kind of squeeze it together to get it to slide through there. And then I will slide the spacer over that. And the clamp needs to go needs to move around so that you can get that bolt through this hole in the exhaust. Now I'm going to put this washer over the bolt where it's sticking through there. I'm going to put a little bit of thread locker in the nut just because that's easier to do than reaching the bolt right now. Again, medium strength. And then I'll see if I can get that nut started on that bolt. Once you've got that started, take a look at where your silencer is aimed. If you want to change that at all, do it before you clamp that down the rest of the way because then it's going to be locked into place. If you're happy with it, then you can go ahead and tighten that down. Once that's done, the silencer should be pretty firmly clamped in place and you should be finished with the installation, the mounting of the exhaust system. But it's not a bad idea to just go around and double check all of the fasteners. That way you can be sure you didn't miss anything and everything's tight. Even though it's mounted to the scooter, don't forget that your new exhaust may require tuning so you might not be done. It's very likely that you'll need to change something like the carburetor jetting or a needle setting, uh, the idle mixture screw. You could need to change the weights in the variator, the clutch tuning, any number of things in the CVT. It could even need ignition timing and further tuning like that. It really depends. Um, so don't just bolt the exhaust on and then head down the road. I would suggest upjetting at least a little bit just to err on the side of safety and then go through a tuning process, um, checking different jets, uh, checking different roller weights, seeing what works best for you. Don't just assume that it's finished now. With that said, I'm going to wrap this video up, but subscribe so that you can see what I need to do to get this exhaust in tune after having a different tune pipe on the TPR86CC. And I also plan to do some performance comparisons to see the difference in the Molosi exhaust versus the piece pipe that I had on there. So make sure you subscribe, um, click the bell so you'll get notifications and you actually know when I uploaded a video. And don't forget to like this video if you've enjoyed it or found it helpful. Thanks for watching.